This brings us to the final part of this probability problem. Specifically, if you randomly select five peanut M&Ms, compute the probability that at least one of them is blue. So let me get a visual going again. Like in our last example, we have a series of events, independent events going on. That is, we're selecting five random peanut M&Ms. Now we want to know what is the probability that at least one of them is blue. Now this is a lot more complicated than anything we've done thus far because the probability that at least one is blue, well, that means the first one could be blue, or the third one and the first one could be blue, or the first and the third and the fifth, but not the second and the fourth, or maybe it was just the second one that was blue, or maybe they're all blue. So there's so many different combinations. All right, it's overwhelming. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we're going to put our thinking caps on and we're going to do it smartly. Let's erase what's going on and let's get a fresh start. So we're going to erase all those M&Ms and we're going to put four, five, excuse me, five fresh M&Ms down. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five. What is the probability that at least one is blue? So let's put our thinking caps on. And rather than considering all the different possibilities where at least one of those M&Ms is blue, let's look at the opposite thing happening, namely the complement. And what is the complement of this event? See if you don't agree with me. I claim that the complement of the event that at least one of the M&Ms is blue is the event that none are blue, right? There is one situation where you will have none of the M&Ms being blue. And that's the exact opposite to at least one of them being blue, isn't it? Once we have that idea of complement, now we have a starting point because we know formulas for complements, right? We know how to get the probability of a complement. We also know how to get the probability that none of those five M&Ms are blue because we just did that in a previous problem. Let's put this together by looking at that rule for complements, namely the probability that an event occurs is equal to one minus the probability that the event does not occur. For our purpose, we can say that the probability that at least one M&M is blue is equal to one minus the probability that none of those five M&Ms are blue. And referring back to our previous problem, we've already calculated the probability that none of those five M&Ms are blue. We took 0 0.77 to the fifth power and we got 0 0.2. 271. We just did this in the previous part. So I'm just going to mark that. We just did this in the previous part. We calculated the probability that none of five M&Ms would be blue. That probability was 0 0.271. And so the probability that at least one is blue is taking 1 minus 0 0.271, and that gives us the probability of 0 0.729. If you select five peanut M&Ms, the probability that at least one of them is blue is 0 0.729. The complement of the probability that all five are not blue. This part was very challenging. And if you had to stretch your brain a bit, don't feel bad. I am sure everybody in the class had to stretch their brain a lot with this problem. It was extra challenging. In any case, I hope that this video helped to explain it a little better. And if you do have any questions about any other probability problem or this one as well, please don't hesitate to reach out.